Roman history often focuses on emperors, generals, and male politicians, leaving the women who shaped the empire in the shadows. Yet, from the corridors of power to the public squares, women like Livia Drusilla, Agrippina, the Younger, and Hortensia wielded influence in ways that still captivate historians and scholars today. These women were not mere spectators in the unfolding drama of one of history's greatest empires. They were active participants, strategists, and even challengers of the status quo. But who were these women, really? What roles did they play in the political, social, and cultural landscapes of ancient Rome? And how did they navigate a world largely dominated by men? 1. Livia Drusilla Livia Drusilla, born in 58 BC, was the wife of Rome's first emperor, Augustus, and the mother of its second, Tiberius. Her marriage to Augustus was not just a union of two individuals, but a strategic alliance that helped solidify Augustus's rule. Her influence was so pervasive that it extended beyond her immediate family to the broader political arena of Rome. Livia was a master of political maneuvering, using her intelligence, charm, and strategic thinking to navigate the complex and often treacherous waters of Roman politics. She was known for her diplomatic skills, often serving as an intermediary between Augustus and various political figures. Her home on the Palatine Hill became a center of political activity, where she hosted dignitaries, conducted private meetings, and even involved herself in matters of state. She was also a patron of the arts and literature, using her influence to support poets and artists who would go on to define the cultural legacy of the Augustan age. Her role as a mother was equally significant. Livia had two sons from her first marriage, and although they did not ascend to the throne, her second son, Tiberius, from her marriage to Augustus, would become one of Rome's most controversial emperors. Livia's influence over Tiberius was profound, and it's widely believed that she played a significant role in his adoption by Augustus and subsequent rise to power. Even after Augustus's death, Livia continued to be a political force, holding the title of Augusta and serving as an advisor to Tiberius during his reign. However, Livia was not without her critics. She was often portrayed as manipulative and power-hungry, with rumors circulating about her involvement in various plots and intrigues, including allegations that she poisoned rivals to secure her son's succession. These portrayals have been the subject of much debate among historians, who argue over the extent to which Livia was a scheming political operator or simply a woman exercising agency in a male-dominated society. Livia Drusilla died in 29 C, but her influence lived on, not just in the reigns of her husband and son, but in the very fabric of the Roman Empire. She was deified by her grandson Claudius and has been the subject of countless works of art, literature, and historical inquiry. 2. Agrippina the Younger Agrippina the Younger was born in 15 AD as a member of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. Born to Germanicus and Agrippina the Elder, she was the sister of Emperor Caligula. Her familial connections alone would have made her a significant figure. But Agrippina was also ambitious, intelligent, and politically astute. Her first marriage to Gnaeus Domitius Ahenobarbus produced a son, Lucius Domitius Ahenobarbus, who would later be known as Nero. After the death of her first husband and a brief second marriage, Agrippina set her sights on the throne itself, marrying her uncle, Emperor Claudius. This union was a calculated political move that would eventually place her son Nero in line for the throne. Agrippina was deeply involved in the political machinations of the time, using her influence over Claudius to eliminate rivals and secure key positions for her allies. She was instrumental in the adoption of her son Nero by Claudius, effectively sidelining Claudius's own biological son, Britannicus. Agrippina's influence didn't wane after Nero's ascension to the throne. If anything, it intensified. Initially, 
She served as a close advisor to her young son, effectively co-ruling the empire during the early years of his reign. However, the relationship between mother and son grew strained as Nero came into his own and sought to assert his independence. Agrippina's political influence became a double-edged sword. It had elevated her to unprecedented heights, but it also made her a target. She was eventually accused of plotting against Nero, leading to her tragic and violent death in 59 AD. Agrippina the Younger has often been portrayed as a scheming, manipulative woman, willing to go to any lengths to achieve power. While there is some truth to this characterization, it is also reductive. Agrippina was a product of her time, a period when political alliances were often sealed with marriage and family ties could be both an asset and a liability. She was a woman who understood the intricacies of Roman politics and used her knowledge to secure a future for herself and her son. 3. Cornelia Africana Cornelia Africana, born around 190 BC, was the daughter of Scipio Africanus, the famed general who defeated Hannibal, but also as the mother of two of Rome's most significant reformers, Tiberius and Gaius Gracchus. Cornelia's life was shaped by her illustrious lineage and the weighty expectations that came with it. She was married to Tiberius Gracchus the Elder, a man of considerable political influence, and together they had twelve children, though only three lived to adulthood. Cornelia's influence on her sons was profound. She educated them herself, ensuring they were well-versed in philosophy, politics, and the art of governance. Her letters to them reveal a woman of great intelligence and wisdom, deeply committed to the ideals of public service and moral integrity. When her sons, Tiberius and Gaius, entered the political arena, they did so with a reformist zeal that aimed to address the social and economic inequities of the Roman Republic. Their proposed reforms, particularly in land distribution, were revolutionary for their time and were met with both fervent support and vehement opposition. Cornelia stood by her sons throughout, serving as both a moral compass and a strategic advisor. Her role as a mother of reformers was not without its heartaches. Both of her sons met tragic ends because of their political activities. Tiberius was clubbed to death by senators opposed to his reforms, and Gaius committed suicide to avoid a similar fate. Yet, Despite these personal tragedies, Cornelia remained a symbol of stoic endurance and virtue. She reportedly refused to don mourning attire after the deaths of her sons, choosing instead to celebrate their lives and legacies. Her home became a place of pilgrimage for Roman matrons and statesmen alike, who sought her counsel and admired her wisdom. Cornelia Africana became an emblem of Roman matronly virtue her life immortalized by historians, playwrights, and poets who saw in her the epitome of Roman dignity and moral fortitude. She was a woman who managed to exert influence in a male-dominated society, not through direct political power, but through her role as a mother and mentor. 4. Fulvia Fulvia born around 83 BC, married three times, each time to a man of significant political standing, first to Publius Clodius Pulcher, then to Gaius Scribonius Corio, and finally to Mark Antony. But Fulvia was far more than just a political spouse. She was an active participant in the political machinations of her husbands, and at times, even surpassed them in her zeal and effectiveness. Her first husband, Clodius, was a populist tribune, and Fulvia became deeply involved in his political campaigns. She was said to have organized and led a group of women to the Rostra, the public speaking platform in Rome, to protest a law that restricted the luxury expenditures of women. After Clodius's death, she continued to be politically active, throwing her support behind her subsequent husbands in their own political endeavors. Her marriage to Mark Antony, however, would catapult her into the center of Roman politics at its most tumultuous period during the formation and dissolution of the Second Triumvirate. 
Fulvia took an active role in raising legions for Antony, and even managed his affairs in Rome while he was away. She was a formidable enemy to those who opposed her or her husband, and she was not above using ruthless tactics to eliminate political rivals. Her political maneuverings were so impactful that she became one of the rare Roman women to appear on official coinage, a testament to her influence and power. However, Fulvia's relationship with Mark Antony became strained, particularly when he began his famous liaison with Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt. Fulvia, perhaps feeling sidelined both politically and personally, took the extraordinary step of raising an army against Octavian, Antony's fellow triumvir, in what came to be known as the Perusian War. The conflict ended unfavorably for Fulvia, leading to her exile and eventual death in 40 BC. 5. Julia Domna Julia Domna, born around 160 AD in Emesa, modern-day Homs, Syria, was an empress of Rome who stood as a paragon of political acumen, intellectual prowess, and cultural patronage. She was the wife of Septimius Severus, the Roman emperor who ruled from 193 to 211 AD and the mother of emperors Caracalla and Geta. Her Syrian heritage and her family priestly background, her father was a high priest of the sun god Elagabalus, added an exotic and religious dimension to her persona, making her a compelling figure in the Roman court. Julia Domna was renowned for her intelligence and was deeply interested in philosophy and the arts. She surrounded herself with intellectuals, writers, and philosophers, turning the imperial court into a hub of intellectual activity. Her patronage helped sustain the cultural and intellectual life of Rome during a period of external wars and internal strife. She was also a political advisor to her husband, accompanying him on military campaigns and taking on administrative duties. Julia Domna had two sons, Caracalla and Geta, who were notorious for their sibling rivalry, a rivalry that culminated in Caracalla murdering Geta. Despite such family tragedies, Julia Domna continued to exercise her influence, particularly during the reign of her son Caracalla. However, after the assassination of Caracalla and the short-lived reign of her grandson Elagabalus, Julia Domna found herself in a precarious position, facing a life without the political influence and familial ties that had defined her. She chose to end her own life in 217 AD. 6. Octavia the Younger Octavia the Younger was the sister of Augustus, Rome's first emperor, and the fourth wife of Mark Antony, one of the most powerful men in Rome. Her life was deeply intertwined with the seismic political events of her era, including the fall of the Roman Republic and the rise of the Roman Empire. Yet, Octavia managed to carve out her own legacy, one that stood apart from the towering figures to whom she was related. Octavia was married to Mark Antony after the death of her first husband, Gaius Claudius Marcellus Minor. This marriage was aimed at solidifying the relationship between Antony and her brother Augustus. Octavia was a devoted wife and mother, raising both her own children and those of Antony's by his previous marriages. When Antony abandoned her for Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt, Octavia's personal tragedy became a political scandal that would have far-reaching implications for Rome. Octavia funded various public works and supported poets including Virgil and Horace, who would go on to create some of the most enduring works of Roman literature. She was beloved by the Roman populace, not just for her moral virtues, but also for her acts of public generosity. Even after her brother and husband became estranged and found themselves on opposite sides of a civil war, Octavia tried to mediate between them, putting the welfare of Rome above her own personal grievances. Octavia the Younger died in 11 BC, and she was deified by her brother Augustus. In a period marked by political upheaval, military conflict, and moral ambiguity, 
exert a quiet but significant influence on the events of her time. 7. Messalina Valeria Messalina, commonly known simply as Messalina, was the third wife of the Roman Emperor Claudius, and a figure whose life has been the subject of both historical inquiry and sensationalist legend, born around 17 or 20 AD. She married Claudius before he ascended to the throne, and she bore him two children, Britannicus and Claudia Octavia. Messalina's life was one of privilege and power, but it was also marred by scandal, intrigue, and ultimately tragedy. As the wife of Claudius, she had access to the highest levels of Roman society and government, and she used this position to enrich herself and eliminate her enemies. Messalina was a woman of great ambition, and she was not content to play a passive role in the politics of her time. She was deeply involved in the intrigues of the Roman court, using her influence over Claudius to secure favorable positions for her allies and to orchestrate the downfall of those she perceived as threats. Among her most notorious acts was her alleged involvement in the execution of several prominent Romans, including senators and members of the imperial family. Her actions were driven not just by political expediency, but also by personal vendetta, and her name became synonymous with treachery and manipulation. Yet, Messalina was keenly aware of the precarious nature of royal succession, and she took steps to ensure that her son, Britannicus, would ascend to the throne. This maternal instinct was inextricably linked to her political machinations as she sought to eliminate anyone who could pose a threat to her children's inheritance. Messalina's downfall came swiftly and dramatically. She was accused of conspiring to overthrow Claudius and replace him with her lover, Gaius Silius. Whether she was actually guilty of this plot, or was the victim of political intrigue, is a matter of historical debate. But the outcome was unequivocal. Messalina was executed in 48 AD. Her life and ambitions cut short in a brutal fashion. 8. Sabina. Vibia Sabina, commonly known simply as Sabina, was the wife of the Roman Emperor Hadrian, who ruled from 117 to 138 AD. Born into a distinguished Roman family around 86 AD, she was a grand niece of the Emperor Trajan, Hadrian's predecessor and adoptive father. Her marriage to Hadrian was arranged and was seen as a union that would further solidify the continuity of the imperial line. However, the marriage was reportedly fraught with difficulties and remained childless, a detail that has led to much speculation about the nature of their relationship. Sabina accompanied Hadrian on many of his travels across the Roman Empire, a fact that suggests she played a role as a consort who was involved in the public life of the empire. These journeys were diplomatic missions aimed at consolidating Roman power and influence. By participating in these travels, Sabina became a visible symbol of Roman imperial unity and stability. She was also honored with various titles and forms of recognition, including coinage bearing her image, a rare honor for Roman women. Though historical accounts suggest that Sabina was less involved in the political machinations of the empire, she was nevertheless a patron of the arts and was reportedly involved in various charitable activities. She lived during a time when Roman art and architecture were flourishing, and her patronage likely contributed to this cultural renaissance. Her influence, while less overtly political, was more subtle, contributing to the social and cultural fabric of the empire. Sabina's life took a tragic turn toward its end. She died in 136 AD, and there are conflicting accounts about the circumstances of her death, including rumors that she was forced to commit suicide, possibly due to a falling out with Hadrian. After her death, however, Hadrian deified her, an honor that suggests a level of respect and importance that may not have been fully captured in the historical accounts of their relationship. 9. Papaya Sabina. Papaya Sabina commonly referred to simply as Papaia, was born around 30 AD to a distinguished family. 
Papaya climbed the social ladder through a series of strategic marriages, culminating in her union with Nero, the Roman emperor from 54 to 68 AD. Before her marriage to Nero, Papaya was married to Otho, a friend and ally of the emperor. However, her ambition and allure quickly caught Nero's eye, leading to a complex romantic entanglement that ultimately saw Otho sent away on a convenient governorship and Papaya installed in the imperial palace. Once she became empress, Papaya is said to have wielded considerable influence over Nero. She was a driving force behind some of his more controversial decisions, including the murder of his mother, Agrippina, the younger, and the divorce and subsequent execution of his first wife, Octavia. While the historical accounts are biased and should be read critically, it is clear that Papaya was more than just a passive recipient of Nero's affections. She was an active participant in the political dramas of her time. Her influence, however, was cut short by her untimely death in 65 AD, under circumstances that remain the subject of much speculation and debate. According to some accounts, she was killed by Nero himself in a fit of rage, while others suggest that she died due to complications from a miscarriage. The legacy of Papaya Sabina is a subject of much debate among historians. She has often been portrayed as a scheming seductress, willing to manipulate and even kill to achieve her ambitions. However, such portrayals often reflect the biases of ancient historians, who were typically male and members of the elite, rather than an objective assessment of her life and influence. 10. Hortensia Hortensia, a Roman woman who lived during the late Roman Republic, stands as a unique figure in Roman history for her eloquence and courage. She was the daughter of Quintus Hortensius Hortalis, a renowned orator and contemporary of Cicero. Unlike many women of her time, who were relegated to the domestic sphere and excluded from the public and political arenas, Hortensia took an active role in the events that shaped her society. Her most famous act came in 42 BC, when she delivered a speech before the Roman Senate and the triumvirs Octavian, Mark Antony and Lepidus protesting the imposition of a tax on wealthy Roman women to fund the war against Brutus and Cassius, the assassins of Julius Caesar. Hortensia's speech was a masterful piece of oratory that drew upon historical precedent, legal argument, and moral reasoning. She questioned the fairness of taxing women who had no representation in the government and no role in the decision-making processes that led to war. She pointed out that Roman women had always been supportive of the state in times of crisis, voluntarily contributing to the public good, but argued that it was unjust to compel them to finance a war that they had no part in instigating. Her words were so compelling that the triumvirs and the Senate were forced to partially repeal the tax, reducing the number of women subject to it and lessening the financial burden. Hortensia's speech challenged the deeply ingrained social norms that limited women's participation in public life, demonstrating that women could be as eloquent, rational, and persuasive as men. Her actions were a testament to the power of words and the importance of civic engagement, values that were central to the Roman Republic. Moreover, her speech was a precursor to the arguments for women's rights and representation that would emerge centuries later, making her an early, if not fully acknowledged, champion of gender equality. Hortensia's life and achievements are not as well documented as those of some of her male contemporaries, a reflection of the gender biases that have shaped the writing of history. However, her speech has been preserved in fragments and cited by later historians, serving as a lasting testament to her skill and bravery. She may not have held political office or commanded armies, but Hortensia wielded a different kind of power, the power of ideas and the courage to speak truth to authority. If you like our videos, then share with your friends and subscribe to the channel for more interesting videos.